the many are monster of reproducibility. So, hi, I'm Vagrant Cascadian, and uh, I may have created a monster. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, uh, just a really very brief uh, introduction to the idea of reproducible builds. Uh, basically, the idea is, uh, ideally, if you build a package from a given set of source code, you build it with a particular tool chain, uh, the binaries, in a really ideal world, they should come out the same, identical, exactly the same. They usually don't. Uh, we're working on fixing that, and this is a project that got me into the big mess of trying to demonstrate that it works on the, uh, basically trying to find more variations by testing on an entirely different architecture. Um, you can find a little bit more about uh, reproducible builds at reproduciblebuilds.org. Um, but I'm basically assuming you get what reproducible builds is about, at least on some level. Um, so, what led me to do this crazy thing? Uh, I'm the U-boot maintainer, which was kind of a crazy thing in its own right. Um, and uh, uh, I noticed that U-boot was marked as reproducible, and I knew that was absolutely ridiculous, because every time I booted U-boot on all of these random systems I've been testing, uh, you get a date string with the seconds in it. I mean, how many times am I... And, and it, the U-Boot builds like countless targets. Um, they're not all building in under one second. <laughs> uh, it usually takes a few minutes at least. Uh, so I knew something was wrong here. And obviously, uh, some packages build differently on different architectures. Uh, some packages don't even get built on uh, every architecture. Uh, and so I thought, well, I've got this handful of ARM boards that people have donated to me uh, just to largely to test U-boot or just because they thought, oh, here, Vagrant, have a board. Uh, and uh, I was a sucker to take them. Um, but now, finally, I had something productive to do with them. I figured, well, I could like set up this whole infrastructure to reproduce these builds myself, but why not share? <laughs> So I decided to contact the Reproducible Builds team and say, hey, why don't I set up a few of these boards for you? Uh, so uh, we started out pretty small. Uh, in August, uh, we got uh, you know, two dual core and two quad core machines running. Uh, that's an example of one of them. That's a, a, a Hummingboard i2EX. Uh, one gig of RAM, dual core. Pretty cool. Uh, and then it went live in September. Uh, it was building about 200 source packages a day uh, with over 20,000 packages. And really, it's probably more like over 24,000. Uh, it was looking like it's going to take over 100 days to build the entire archive just for unstable. Uh, what a mess. That's not, a, you know, uh, it's a pretty big development cycle to test the entire archive, so uh, that was just wasn't going to do. Um, so uh, I bought a couple more boards and uh, got some donations. I kind of solicited some donations, got one from BeagleBoard, and then Holger was like, Vagrant, are you buying all these boards yourself? I was like, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, so Holger helped by uh, soliciting to get a donation from the DPL uh, to, and we wrote up a proposal to double or triple the capacity of our build network. Uh, the picture there is an example of a BeagleBoard X15. Uh, that was one of the ones donated. But the majority of our network got built out from funds from Debian. Uh, this is basically w roughly what it looks like uh, when I started building this out. Uh, there are just cables everywhere. Uh, cable management is not my strength, but even if it was, it's a lot of cables. <laughs> um, so, what's that? Yeah, there are a few. Um, so, yeah, uh, we can see a handful of systems there. But that's basically what it looks like. These pictures were taken a few days ago. Um, the basic gist of the current setup, we've got a few dual core, a few quad core, you know, anywhere from one to four gigs of RAM. 
Uh, the tilde on the four gigs of RAM is, well, only one of our boards actually recognizes all four gigs. We've got a few uh, Qbox i 4x4s, <coughs> which recognize only 3.8 gigs of RAM. But that's still pretty good. Um, uh, so how many Wattstrom thingies we got? You know, I did a little math, because, uh, you know, we're pretty good at math, right? At least with computers. Um, 86 cores and 43 gigabytes of RAM. But, you know, we're comparing apples to oranges. Uh, uh, some of the cores are a lot faster than others, and some of the RAM is faster or slower. So that, that's, those are kind of stupid numbers, really. Um, so a useful number, since we're building packages, is we're up to building about 1,400 packages a day. And actually, the last few weeks, it's looking more like 1,600. Um, you see some of those red spikes. Uh, and, uh, I think one of our best days, we got to around 2,000. Um, builds all of unstable testing and experimental in about a month and a half, uh, which that's more reasonable. I also kind of feel like maybe we shouldn't bother testing, testing, and all that. And then we could get a real development cycle going. Um, but. Uh, so anyone want to take a guess where we started getting a lot of donations? <laughs> um, it's actually kind of funny. Uh, basically, it's basically we started, all the new machines went live right in this deep dip right here. <laughs> That's the way life goes. Um, but there are some technical glitches. And uh, then a few days later, we started bumping up to more around like 1,000 packages a day. And you know, getting into some more reasonable numbers. <clears throat> Um, the whole build network runs in under 180 watts. Um, there's a picture of the of the uh, power remote power controller, so I can manually reset them. They don't always stay up 24/7. <laughs> um, some of them crash. We rarely go a day without at least one crash. But that switch has some features to auto ping them and reset and reset them when needed, and uh, so. You know, yeah. Uh, and right now, I think one of the boards is actually down at the moment. Uh, and it's probably not getting back till I get home. <laughs> but uh, and by comparison, if you don't know what, uh, what one watt is or 180 watts is, uh, the space heaters used at Dubcom 16 use between 400 and 800 watts. So we could easily run two to uh, you know four of these build networks in the energy it takes to run just a single one of the space heaters we've been using. <clears throat> uh, this uses a fair amount of bandwidth, and I didn't really think about this when I, when I, when I started this project. But uh, um, the vast majority, uh, uh, you know, we've downloaded about 100 some 100 some gigabytes of you know, source packages every day. But the real surprise is how many we upload. <laughs> we upload about, uh, uh, this is in, uh, for June. Um, we upload like over half a terabyte of, of you know, binary packages, because we build them twice, and then we upload somewhere where it does all the comparisons. Uh, the proxy server, however, I, I did an apt caching proxy server. That delivered uh, uh, you know, almost five terabytes of data in June. So uh, I guess the proxy server is working pretty well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was a little surprised. We started hitting near the, the bandwidth limits of my ISP at one point. And uh, they never complained, which I'm glad. <laughs> um, so we've got a number of different types of boards. Uh, one of the things, one of my goals was, well, if we're going to try and create variations, let's throw in some variety. Let's get as many different types of boards as we can get. And uh, most of them are Freescale IMX6 based boards, but we've got a handful of other ones. And, and there are some multiples on a number of these. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, yeah, I really, I doubt if we've actually found anything that builds reproducibly on one set of boards and not on another. But, uh, but in theory, it's possible something might actually check the CPU type running and build differently. We'll find out. <laughs> um, 
And then, so as a result of all this, I actually ended up enabling a number of platforms in Debian that work out of the box or almost out of the box. Uh, got U or Linux support for uh, the Odroid Firefly, um, the Odroid Zoo 4, BeagleBoard X15, uh, enabled U-Boot, which I'm the maintainer of for a number of other boards, and uh, enabled Debian installer support for some boards. Some of the boards actually already had some of this support, so I didn't have to do as much. So that's why these are not all like perfectly lined up here. But <clears throat> uh, And then there are platforms. Mm, it's kind of sad. Uh, so, some of them lack mainline kernel and U-boot, uh, and I got a couple of those. Uh, I picked up the Odroid C1 myself, and we got a couple QB boards for the build, but they just don't go anywhere. The vendor kernels suck. The vendor U-boot, it, like, it might boot, but uh, even, you know, rebooting once a day, that's maybe tolerable, but rebooting every hour or two, not really viable. Um, some of them also lack mainline kernel support. Uh, the QB Truck Plus and the LeanMaker High Key um, haven't really been able to use them because the vendor kernel is not so great. And, uh, and well, the mainline support, maybe it exists, but like uh, uh, Martin Michelmeyer said in his last talk, uh, yeah, you know, serial console is nice and all, and you can see the RAM, and it might even recognize all the CPU cores, but not particularly useful if you don't have any USB support or, uh, uh, or uh, you know, uh, um, the micro SD or anything like that. And a number of them uh, we're using, but they require some non-free binary blobs. You know, Raspberry Pi, the Odroid family are all disastrous in that regard. And I'm not sure about Firefly. Um, that's a rock chip based one. It might have some binary thing. I had trouble resurrecting one when it had a terrible fail. And then I've worked, I'm running some patched U boots for uh, uh, the Firefly 4 gigabyte variant and the Qbox i4 by 4. Uh, need to work on some sort of auto detection to figure out uh, so that you can run the same U boot on multiple different boards. Um, right now, the if you try to run the four gigabyte variant of U-Boot on the two, gig two gigabyte board model, it'll just crash or something. So it doesn't work out so great. Um, <clears throat> so we're looking at uh, some other boards in the future. Um, I've got a few Pine64 boards waiting at home, and there's been really great uh, progress on mainline support for both U-Boot and the kernel. Uh, I don't know how Odroid C2 is coming, but I'm, I'm, I'll spend some time on it. And then uh, we might get access to some Limaker Cello, or even a, I've heard rumors of getting access to some HP Moonshot stuff, so that would be pretty exciting. And one thing I'd really like to try is building uh, the architecture independent packages on two different architectures. So we build uh, Arch all on one, you know, on the ARMHF architecture, and then build it again on AMD64. Do they come out the same? Uh, how will we ever find out? Um, I'm guessing I'm moving a little too fast here, <laughs> which will leave plenty of time for questions. Um, so. Uh, in the distant future, I, I think the autonomous reproducible build network will reproduce the entire Earth. Um, this is kind of the monster we're heading towards. Um, many thanks to all sorts of folks. Holger has put in an absurd amount of time getting this infrastructure set up. Uh, we've gotten hardware donations mostly from Debian. They contributed probably about two thirds of the build network. Uh, Limaker has donated a handful of boards, directly or indirectly. Ah, not so bad. And uh, BeagleBoard donated the BeagleBoard X15, which uh, I don't think it's generally available yet, so Debian supports a board that's not even really on the market yet. Surprise. And uh, Solid Run also donated one of the boards. Uh, the Reproducible Builds team is awesome. They've uh, really put up with me in a lot of ways. I, uh, I often pester them about, hey, I've got this idea how we could do this or that. They've been really supportive, even if they say no. 
Um, and uh, my partner did most of the photos in this. And uh, so we've got, uh, I've got, you know, I'll introduce you to the staff. We've got a Hummingboard one that basically does, it's got uh, two 13 port, 13 port USB serial consoles and that's basically just doing some serial console monitoring on all the boards. We've got an RPI, we have two RPI uh, Raspberry Pi 2 boards. Um, it, look, it's a board. <laughs> Uh, most all of the boards are running on 120 gigabyte SSDs, some of them with SATA, some of them on USB 2, some of them USB 3. Um, this one is the QB board 3, aka the QB truck. Uh, another uh, Raspberry Pi. This is one of the uh, QBox I boards. It's one of the most, uh, it, it's literally a black box. <laughs> Um, yeah, but more open than your typical black box, I guess. Uh, the Odroid Zoo 4, um, those are one of the few ones that actually has a fan, which kind of annoys me. I guess they just recently made some very large heat sinks so you can run them fanless. I would love to get those because they make little whirring noises that drive me crazy. But this is one of our best performing boards, uh, despite the annoying fan. Uh, it's uh, perhaps because of, yes. Um, but it's running, I think, a Cortex A15. And um, it's got, oh, it, no, this is the OctaCore board. Um, and uh, even though it's only got two gigs of RAM, it seems to consistently be one of the higher performing boards in our network. Um, this is a onboard quad, and this was one of the first like fairly capable arm boards I started working with. Um, and uh, it, that one, that one is one of the boards that rarely ever reboots. Which so if you want a nice solid one, uh, the onboard quad, it's not the most powerful thing on the market, but it, it's reasonable and pretty stable, really well supported. We've got the Firefly. Uh, the Orange Pi Plus 2, uh, you can really get lost trying to figure out all the Orange Pi variants. Uh, another Firefly board, another Orange Pi Plus 2, and I think that's it. So, uh, I know we're probably almost out of time, which works for me, but <laughs> um, how many, uh, anybody got any questions? Do they uh, crash because of kernel bugs or because of heat or what? Do, do you have any idea? Not entirely sure, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um, some of the, they'll definite, I definitely see some kernel panics. Uh, sometimes the USB kind of dies when, when your rootFS is on USB. That can be bad. Uh, there are all sorts of random things. We don't really have enough time to really troubleshoot all of that. Um, but uh, yeah, mostly, you know, with 21 boards running, we get one, maybe two reboots a day that are due to who knows what. Um, but it's kind of one of those, you know, you know, you, a large RAID array, uh, one of those disks is going to fail. Um, kind of same kind of problem. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It looks like we've got a hand over in the back yep. corner here. We have also a question ah, okay. from IRC. So the question is, which boards have been gave the best performance for this implementation? Um, I mentioned the, the Odroid XU4 um, was definitely doing pretty well, but it's also one of the ones that reboots the most. So it's kind of, an, it's kind of this like, well, it still gets the best numbers, but it just crashes randomly. So. Um, and then the one board is a little bit less good numbers, but, but much more stable. So, uh, yeah, uh, it, they're all pretty, I mean, they range, I think they range just under 100 builds a day up to around 200 builds a day per board. Um, I don't, yeah. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for doing all this setup. It's quite impressive. And the question is, uh, if you grow your network, 
Uh, would it be possible to share resources for QA, like for example, hooking some of the boards to, to Lava, uh, which is a framework Linaro does for doing ARM validation and stuff like that? Yeah, I, I think it's possible. Um, we could maybe just do some scheduled downtime for the, the reproducible builds network. It's not absolutely essential. We're running it, you know, 24 seven. Um, and uh, we briefly chatted about uh, actually how to do some U-boot testing over Lava. And, uh, but yeah, I'm open to the idea. Most of it, most of the network is done with Debian funds too. So yeah, I would love to share. Um, yeah. So, okay, thank you for your talk. We are out of time now. All right. And so um, I think that the discussions can also start um, yeah, in, at the DevCon. And thank you for your presentation. All right. Thank you.